Happy Thursday from uh, Fred and Dylan of the Clark Pest Control Bugsy Zoo. Well, actually, I'm from the Clark Pest Control Bugsy. Zoo. He's just, he's just my helper for the day. So today we're gonna be talking about the amazingly awesome, awesome Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So what we're, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the difference between a male and a female, or how to tell the difference. A little bit of background, where do they, where do they come from, their behavior, and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna reach in and find, and by the way, this is one of three of our Madagascar hissing cockroach colonies. This is probably the smallest. That's why we're using this one today. So this right here is a male. And how I know it's a male is because of these two horns on top of its head. Anybody take a look at that? Those two horns right on top of the exoskeleton. Now, something else that tells me it's a male is the furry antennas. You take a look, see how furry those are? And for the most part, they're of pretty much equal length. Now, what the horns are used for is roaches have... Male roaches are, are very aggressive towards other male roaches. Now, what they do is when they say um, they're looking at a female that they would like to mate with. They're going to let out a loud hiss and they're gonna mosey on over to that, to that female. Well, another male, if I could find another one, here's, here's another male, may say, nope, I don't think so, I'm gonna challenge you. So this begins a roach battle. Now, roaches don't just battle over, over females, they, they battle over pretty much anything. This piece of cork bark right here, they may come in and get angry with each other because one's on it and they'll hiss and start a, start a battle. Here's how a battle works. The two males lock horns and they push each other back and forth. During this time they're hissing. Now, whoever walks away first is the loser. There is no battle to the death, there's no battle to injury, roaches are too lazy to do that. So during this time, while they're battling, as the loser walks away, the winner lets out loud hisses. So that's the reason for these two horns on top of their, their exoskeleton. So now let's take a look at a female. Oops, sorry about that, I mean to drop you upside down. And by the way, usually if these roaches do land on their backs, they have a very hard time flipping back over. So let's find a female. Here's one right here. So the female, has very smooth over bumps, little, little tiny bumps on top of their top of their head. <laughs> Sorry about that. She's going a little crazy. Females are not aggressive towards one another or males. Also, if you take a look at the antennas, the antennas are not fuzzy. Now, some some say, oh well, it's a female because it has it's two tone in color. That's absolutely incorrect. As you can see, we have mottled colors such as almost all black with some yellow striping or tan striping. What we're looking for to tell if it's a female or not is the bumps and the antennas. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand one of these over to my assistant. Here you go, Dylan. So roaches are, are so in my opinion, these are the coolest roaches on the planet. And there's a reason for that. The Madagascar hissing cockroaches have, carry no germs or diseases, which is pretty awesome, and it's all based on their diet. Now, their diet consists of fresh fruits, vegetables, as well as dead and decaying plant life. This means plants that are starting to die, this is what they're gonna feed on. That's, that's their target food. Now, the name, Madagascar hissing cockroach. Well, the Madagascar hissing cockroach does come, is found on the island of Madagascar, and the hissing part comes from, that's not just a thing when, when they're fighting over something. It also comes from one of their only defenses. Now, what happens is in Madagascar, these are prey to lizards. So as a lizard approaches, they know the lizard's there. They'll let out a loud Now, that lizard has to stop and think, is that that roach that's making that noise, or is it my predator? Dylan, what do you think a, a lizard's predator would be that would hiss? One of these. No. <laughs> it would be... 
a snake. That's right, a snake. So that lizard has to make that decision if he wants to stick around and try to eat that, or if he wants to leave because he thinks his predator is nearby. So that's how they survive in Madagascar. So in captivity, these will live two to three years. I'll take another look at him up close. Two to three year lifespan. And it's, and honestly, it's really hard to get them to hiss. Sometimes if, if I disturb them, they will hiss a little bit. But since they are handled on a regular basis, oh, 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 hear that? Oh, he's not, he's not gonna do it again. There we go. <laughs> That's what it his sounds. Now, sometimes at night, since they are nocturnal, at nighttime, they will all cover the walls of this enclosure. And if I walk up at night, put my hand on the enclosure, every single roach in here will hiss. It's really cool. So um, anyways, uh, check the description below for more information on, on these awesome little roaches. Um, and by the way, they do make great pets. They're easy to keep care of. Um, and really quick, I'm gonna answer one more, I'm gonna answer a question. And this is a question that's asked during every single bug zoo. Are these their babies? No, they're not. <laughs> these are very similar to what you'd call Orbeez. Um, roaches drowned, can drown in basically a teaspoon of water. So that's why there's no normal water dish. So what we do is we spray the inside spray, all the furniture within the tank, so they could walk up and, and, and eat the drops, of, lick the drops of water for their moisture. If for some reason in the middle of the night that water's evaporated, they're thirsty. So what they do is they basically use these and they chew their water. That's right, they chew their water. Mm -hmm. So what this actually is, is gelatin, water, and that's it. So it gives them a good source of, um, of hydration. So that's it for today. And we'll see you back on the next episode. I'm gonna kind of give you a hint what it is. Could be a scorpion. Mm, which scorpion though? Stay tuned. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Say bye, Dylan.